In this video, I'm going to show you how you can know for sure if your capacitors are broken or good. The other day, one of my single phase induction motors stopped running. It was a capacitor start capacitor run motor. The first thing you must do before touching any one of these capacitors is to discharge it. If you touch a fully charged capacitor, it could kill you. These capacitors are rated up to 450 volts and depending on how the motor is using them, it might be close to that. So do not touch it until you've discharged it. I will oftentimes use a screwdriver. Now, the other thing that I will do to make sure it's fully discharged is check it with a meter and that will show if there is any residual voltage on the capacitor. Anything less than 50 volts is considered safe, but I like it to be even closer to zero. After checking the centrifugal clutch, I decided to take a look at the capacitors. Now, the two capacitors that are in there is the capacitor that's for starting the motor, and this is the run capacitor and they are constructed a little bit differently. They also have different ratings. The, aside from saying motor starting capacitor, you can also tell because it has a much higher microfarad rating. This is a 200 microfarad compared to the 30 of the run capacitor. So now let's take a look at how you can tell if they're working. Now the first step is visual inspection. So one of these two capacitors is bad. But how can you tell? There's not any black soot from sparking, and they both look in pretty good shape. There's a little ding in this one, but is that going to keep it from working? Well, actually, the main thing to look for is swelling on the cap of the capacitor. And in this case, one of them is flat, and the other one is bulged up like that. So this one is bad. Capacitor feels spongy on the top, soft. I compress it. The good capacitor is flat and does not compress near as much. For the second test, put your meter into the capacitor test mode. If you don't have that, stick around and I'll show you a third way that you can verify the capacitors. Let's check both start capacitors first. Let's start with the one that's supposedly bad. The rating is called out 200 microfarad. It usually takes a couple seconds for the meter to register the reading, especially on larger capacitors. Now, it's interesting that it's reading 240, which is significantly higher than the rating and definitely out of spec. Now let's move over to the new, new starting capacitor. It's also rated for 200, and you can see it comes in much closer. Now, let's move on to the run capacitor. The run capacitor that I took out of the motor is rated for 30 microfarads. It reads 23. That is very far out of spec, probably around 20%. I have pretty good reason to believe that that capacitor is bad. Now let's check the new one, also rated for 30. 30.8, much better. If your meter does not have a capacitor function that may only be available on higher end meters, you can still check it using the ohms setting. If you don't have a automatic meter, set it to the highest resistance setting. What you want to do is start by making sure that the capacitor is discharged. Now I know that we've already done this, but particularly if you're repeating this process, you start by discharging it because that will cause the resistance to initially read zero. And then it will increase from zero very rapidly up to hundreds of thousands and then millions of ohms. Watch how the meter starts in the lower range and then eventually goes to OL as it's recalculating and changing its range into the mega ohm range. 
once that behavior happens, if you want to watch it again, you have to discharge it again. Let's see it. Okay, so that's how a healthy capacitor should behave. Initially, the resistance is zero, but it very rapidly approaches infinity. I'll show you that this capacitor, the one with the bulge, will actually test okay in that it starts at zero and then ramps up to the mega ohm range. But because of the bulge, we know that it's on its way out. Now I'll test the new starting capacitor and it will test almost identically to the old one except that its capacitance rating is within spec unlike this one. Our conclusion is that these two capacitors are bad because this one tested too far under 30 microfarads and this one tested too far over 200 microfarads while these two were much much closer and within their rated tolerance. So those are the basics on testing run capacitors and start capacitors. Thanks for watching and stay safe.